It's Tibble at the Podcast. Hey, we're back. It's another episode of Tibble at the Podcast. We're finally getting this out of the way. Episode number seven. It's been quite a while since we've last been on air. Uh, a couple of things have happened over the last couple of months. Congratulations to the Panthers and the Broncos for making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, also, congratulations to St. Francis' uh, basketball teams. They're doing very well as well. And uh, we've had a couple other things happen over the last few months that probably shouldn't have happened. Uh, let's get into depth here. We just I just came out of Christmas break, and um, it's been now three weeks since I've been back at school. And a couple of things have happened. We've had, I went on, I just came off a field trip today to Lyon Arboretum, uh, where we literally hiked the whole thing and then came back and then we had absolutely nothing to do with it whatsoever because we lost our way on the way there. And I had a feeling that Mr. Rock Omar teacher was kind of trying to make it into a little adventure, which I enjoyed, there is no doubt. But um, I would have kind of thoroughly enjoyed it if he had, if we just stick to the trail, as uh, most people would normally would in this situation. A um, couple of things have happened over the last couple of months. Uh, the Golden State Warriors are, uh, they're doing good, uh, begrudgingly well, uh, for their part in this. And um, also... Uh, David Blatt's been fired as head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So both teams are going in completely opposite directions with this. Uh, Tyron Lue is now the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers, which I think is completely interesting. But here's the thing about Blatt. Everyone that thinks LeBron had something to do with it just needs to calm down. Because if LeBron really had something to say about the firing of David Blatt, then what could he have done? What, what, what would have influenced Dan Gilbert to fire him? It's not LeBron's fault that, Le, that David Black got fired. He took them to the finals for one season, and I think he should have been kept, should have given another chance. But I do get the point that he might have been losing the locker room after uh, the NBA finals because his playing style and the way he won over the locker room didn't really sit well with the players, as I found out later. And so that's really disturbing to me that a coach that takes his team to the NBA Finals doesn't win over his locker room and then decides that he's going to get fired. It just doesn't make sense to me that way. Um, also, uh, what was I going to say? We have another uh, another accomplishment on the way. Um, video production has been going uh, swimmingly here so far. We're doing a service project commercial. And uh, I think I may be taking it for questioning. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to get taken it for questioning. Um because I filmed the bank line, and I probably shouldn't have, without asking the security. So that's a great segue into that, because David Blatt didn't secure the locker room, and he should have been playing the role of father instead of security guard to LeBron, and I think that is why he got fired in Cleveland, because his playing style obviously never wore thin. It wasn't his personality. It was just the way he won over the locker room, I think. We shouldn't pin the blame on David Blatt or LeBron, because it's not their fault. So, anyway, um, it's time for the segment that uh, really has a lot of people on edge this this uh, week, especially two fans of a particular squad. It's time for the opening rap. It's time for today's opening. Yes, it is time for the opening rap. Um, this month's rant and. Um, my best friend Kelly is in over in the other room, so she's probably going to hear this as well. Uh, she is a big Golden State Warriors fan. So this is my problem with Golden State. To Steve Kerr and the Warriors, we know you're good, all right? We, we figure you're good. We figure, you know, you got the best record in the NBA. You're going to get to the record, blah, blah, blah. But can we shut up for just one week about the Golden State Warriors? There is not a place I go in the sports world today where I hear someone speak about the Warriors, and it absolutely drives me nuts. Because I guarantee you, if the Warriors do not win the NBA Finals this year, that bandwagon is going to be a whole lot lighter next year. It's time to let it go. The Warriors are good. Get over it. I'm sick and tired of hearing about the Warriors on every turn. Hey, why don't we talk about the Raptors? Why don't we talk about the Cavaliers? Nah, all I hear about is the Golden State Warriors, and I'm sick of it. 
Some team needs to go into Oracle Arena and shut this team up once and for all so that we can finally get talking about the NBA the way it should be. Not about the Warriors, not about Steve Kerr, not even about Steph Curry, just the NBA. I'm sorry, Warriors fans. If you don't win the NBA this year, you're not going to have a good team next year. It's the way it is. Here on the lighter side, though, the Warriors are a good team. I will, gr I will concede that. But we cannot make a big deal about the Golden State Warriors. Why? Because they're just like everybody else. They're going to go through their cycle. They're going to have their championship window. They're going to have their title window. Who the hell cares if they 3 P? I I don't even care if they win six in ten years. Okay? I don't even care if they win six championships in 10 years. They're still like the rest of the NBA. They're going to have their cycle. Steph Curry's going to get older, and so is Klay Thompson. As soon as they reach that age, they're going to go downhill. It's not going to be long before that happens. So I'm telling you all right now, if you're a Golden State Warriors fan, wait until at least 2020, because that's when this team is going to go downhill. I'm sorry, but that's the way it's going to be. That's the same thing with the Celtics. They had their chance. They had their opportunities. They won their title, and then they declined. And look where they are now. They're full of young players, and they have a good team. Look at the Raptors. They have Vince Carter. They went downhill. They traded him. Look at the Lakers. They had Kobe Bryant, Paul Gasol, Ron Artest, Andrew Bynum. Look where they are now. Kobe's 39. Jordan Clarkson is not the answer. Jordan Hill absolutely was a tremendous failure. Julius Randle can't stay healthy. D'Angelo Russell maybe might not be the answer. And furthermore, look at the Minnesota Timberwolves. Look at the Sixers. Look at all the bottom feeders in the NBA. That's what the Golden State Warriors are going to become in the next 5 to 10 years. It's the way it is. I'm not saying I hate the Warriors by any stretch. Okay, maybe I do hate them a little bit. But I'm not saying that they are the most arrogant team in the NBA. They're not. They just act like they are. But then again, you tell me, oh, why didn't the Celtics act like that when they won the title? Why didn't the Lakers act like that because they won the, when they won the title? I know it's a contradiction, but that's the way it is. That's the way it has to be. That's the way it is. I am the sky don't lie, my friend. All right, we got through that. Um, a quick recap, uh, if you're the first timer to this podcast. Um, uh, we've had six episodes here so far. Uh, we had one uh, in June, one in July, one in August, one in September, October, and I think you get the pattern November. I think the highlight of this podcast... I think we're going to go back and take a look at 2015 the way it was because we haven't gotten really had an opportunity to look at 2015 and turn a, turn the page to 2016. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go back to the very first podcast in June. That's when I talked about the NHL draft. If you want to watch the podcast, by the way, go back and subscribe on my YouTube page. Uh, Mike McFarland from the uh, Tiger and Torrance podcast in uh, Toronto also subscribed to my page, and he's a really good friend of mine. Uh, I'm also trying to get some more guests on this podcast. I'm trying to get Engineer Jim, uh, the legendary engineer from uh, the JNAM podcast, who's worked with numerous bands on numerous occasions. He worked with Guns N' Roses, uh, Aerosmith, David Bowie, you name it. He's worked with them. Uh, he's an absolutely great guy. And uh, I think the real highlight of this podcast was definitely the interview, which I'll get to a bit, a, a bit later. So let's go back to 2015. I started the podcast, and... Um, it was a really great thing. We had some good people on there. I actually ranted about the NHL draft uh, and the NHL a few times, and I actually ranted about the NBA a few times. And uh, that was pretty fun. I got to grate on uh, the nubs of some years of people that uh, never heard this podcast before. Um, and that was a really good time. It, and I, that's what I generally do this for. I do this for fun. And whether people like it or not, you know, it's their opinion. I'm not a judgmental person. Maybe I'm a bit of a judgmental person, but I don't judge people. But I try I, I try not to judge people. I try to say that. So uh, 
And then in July, we had our first guest, which was AJ, uh, one of my good friends. He's at a Menlo College now in, uh, in the city, by the way, San Francisco. Uh, we actually talked about the NBA draft, and he said that the Lakers might actually do good this year. But uh, looking at the, on the bright side, maybe they're not doing so hot right now. And uh, hopefully I'm going to have him on again to discuss that in another couple of months. So uh, we're going to take you back. We're going to listen to that same interview with AJ, uh, the very first interview we had on the podcast. And here it is. Uh, Antonio Malillo, one of my good friends, is going to join us today. Uh, you know, we have we wanted to have you on for a very long time. Um, yeah, we're the Lakers. Hopefully we, we will make the playoff. Um, actually, not this year. We will we'll have to see what happens this year, and then maybe, maybe next year we'll make it. But it'll be like a low 8, 8, eight 7 seed. That's what I think. But in the next you have to see like what happens to Julius Randle and DeAngelo Russell and Jordan Clarkson, so the three, and we'll see where they grow and the potential the potential is there for those three to remain on the Lakers. Yeah, I, I do feel as if they are going to uh, move in the next direction. It's like, yeah, I feel as if they are. Will LeBron ever win Cleveland a title before he retires within the next maybe five or six years? I personally. Don't think so. AJ Maluyo joining us here on the uh, Tumalip, uh, the podcast. Um, a very in-depth discussion. All right, that was a fun episode. That was really fun. Um, but I think the one you really want to hear is a skimmed-down version of um, of uh, the podcast where we had that crazy roundtable with Jason and Mr. Ragus is in the other room right now, and he helped me set this up. I'm in a I'm in the studio. Uh, here at St. Francis. If I can describe it to you, there's black uh, ceiling tiles on the wall. We painted them black. Uh, we actually painted the walls black. Uh, we have blue and uh, black soundproofing on the walls. Uh, there's a massive green screen that we just put in uh, in December. And then we have our St. Francis curtain behind it. So I'm very fortunate we're here. So uh, it was a very crazy episode. So here's just a little quick bit of uh, what actually happened during that podcast. And you're going to enjoy this. This is really funny. You can't say that on this podcast. We're going to have to edit that out in the final version. So uh, let's open it up for discussion here on the round table. This is bull****, <laughs> you know? <laughs> this school year has been... <laughs> so uh, uh, the next two months are kind of screwed up because I'm trying to get guests on. What's quad hit the quad? That's okay. Right. <laughs> what are my classmates? Sounds, <laughs> sounds like a dirty movie. Apparently not. Uh, I think uh, Seth Blatter has stepped in and he has uh, taken control of the voting, so... <laughs> Boy, that was, uh, that was fun. I gotta remember that one. Uh, episode 4, um, I can't tell you guys about that because it has some like really racy things in it and I don't want to offend anybody. So if you want to watch that episode, just go back to my page and you can watch uh, what happened in that episode. Nothing really happened. Uh, episode 5... I have to revisit one of the greatest home runs in playoff MLB playoff history. Uh, if you missed it, for Blue Jays fans, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, taken back to those ecstasy days of ecstasy again. But uh, for Rangers fans, yeah, well, prepare to have your heart broken. Here it is. Still can't get over that bat flip. That was the greatest home run. And I have to say, I was watching it on my mobile device, my phone on Fox Sports Go, when I was getting off the bus, when that happened, after the shower of debris happened. And I have to tell you, there was not a, a nerve in my system that was just firing off because that was an amazing home run after what happened with the uh, the controversial call and the tra and the game being played under protest. I mean, that was just amazing to amazing to see and do. Uh, but one last thing before we uh, sign off here, um, we have to go back to yes, the interview 
with Jay Onright. And I'm going to give you a shorter version of the interview here. If you want to see the whole interview, go to my YouTube page and you can watch the whole entire 14 minute interview there. It was one of the greatest interviews I've ever done on this podcast. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jay Onright. So uh, we have Jay Onright. Um, the weather's not as nice as Hawaii, that's for sure. <laughs> You know, we're so fortunate that people love our podcast so much because they can't see our TV show up here anymore. Um, so, <laughs> yep. it's, you know, kind of frustrating for them. Um, there's rules and regulations with Canadian TV. I notice you talk a lot about chemistry. The same group you guys. Um, because the first book, as you know, was really about career. Um, and, you know, sort of the unusual path that a Canadian broadcaster takes to different cities that he or she lives in. Um, this one is a bit more mining my past past. In fact, my past here in Alberta. Thank you very much, Bud. And as uh, your favorite comedian, Tim and Eric, would say, uh, Baja. Baja. Uh, love it, my friend. Have a great afternoon, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. So as we end that, it's uh, time to turn the page to 2016. Oh, boy. It's the 100th day of school. We have 78 more days left. Uh, this is probably going to be released in February, and I'm recording this on the Tuesday, the last Tuesday of January, so this is likely going to be released probably next Tuesday as the first treat uh, pre-Super Bowl. Uh, before we sign off, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Super Bowl. Uh, Panthers and Broncos. So I'm going to give you my pick right now. So let's analyze. You have the Sheriff, Peyton Manning, against the new school, Cam Newton. And you have a defense that loves to hit against a defense that loves to turn the ball over. I think this is going to be a defensive battle because we know Manning can't throw a tight spiral and Cam Newton is probably going to have a difficult time against Von Miller and this DeMar and DeMarcus Ware in this Broncos defense. But if he goes off, then I think I would swing the pendulum in favor of the Panthers. And I think that's where I'm going to go with this. I'm going to pick the Carolina Panthers to win the Super Bowl uh, by the final score of 30-21. to 21. Why? Because Cam Newton is just a little bit better in his mechanics than not than by Peyton Manning. Not a lot, just a little bit. I think Pey I think Peyton Manning is going to struggle in this game because this Carolina Panthers defense is quick. They can get upfield quickly, and they can also play smart. But if Josh Norman can't hold his head, then of course the pendulum would swing in favor of the Broncos. But that would mean Demarius Thomas, you know, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, and. Vernon Davis and even Virgil Green, even C.J. Anderson would have to big have a big game. So I think if the Broncos can put it all together, they can definitely pull off the upset. But in the end, I think I swing to the Carolina Panthers. The final score, 30 to 21. Panthers finally break that drought and they win the Super Bowl in Santa Clara, California. And uh, and meanwhile, the coaching carousel continues around the NFL. We just received word today that the 49ers have hired former Browns D.C. Jim O'Neill. As their next defensive coordinator, I'll give my thoughts on Chip Kelly next month, and that will be our rant next month as well. A little bit of foreshadowing, but just not, but just a bit. Uh, next month, we're going to have a Super Bowl recap and uh, look ahead to uh, the NFL draft. We're also going to preview the wind down of the NHL season and NBA All-Star Weekend. And uh, happy belated New Year, everyone. Time to turn the page to 2016. Till next time, see you later. Thank <laughs> you.